thing of the, the similar ilk here. Doubt it, but you never know. Up. And they're Ma away. Market so in play. These things happen for the Tri Racing TV for free now. Novice stakes. Uh, Southern Voyage, the favourite in the grey jacket, went to post a little keenly and is the first to show in the race itself. And leads up half a length clear to the only previous winner in the race, Noble Crusade, who's in second. Cedar Rapids goes freely in the pink jacket. And then along that one's inside, Brian Wood. Chased a further three quarters of a length back by Tiger Beetle, who's in the blue and white colours. Then the light green of Everett along the inside. And at the back end of the field, the two newcomers, Wild Beautiful Thing in red and black diamonds along the inside of these things happen as they make their progress on towards the end of the back straight in a race which at 12 months ago fell to Ordaria, who of course went on later in the year to win at the Breeders' Cup. About to make this left-handed turn, Southern Voyage, the horse who was second in the Wood Ditton down at Newmarket on debut, is leading up here. This is third race today. Second place a length behind is Noble Crusade. Then in third to the inside, Brian Wood ahead of Tiger Beetle running in fourth. Then Cedar Rapids in fifth, uh, chased through by Everett. And at the back of the field, both of the newcomers just being nudged a little bit here to try and close up a bit. Uh, these things happen and a wild, beautiful thing learning on the job. Half a mile left to stride, and it is Southern Voyage the far side under Paul Mull Renan, with nearly upsides now Noble Crusade in the middle, and to the outside Tiger Beetle improving. They're being chased through by Brian Wood, and then a little wider out is Cedar Rapids, and the other three are getting left behind, and a Southern Voyage has been tackled here, making the journey on down to the final two and a half furlongs by both Tiger Beetle in the blue and white colours, and at Noble Crusade. On the far left is Brian Wood, and further back to Cedar Rapids as they head inside the final two, the first of the leading three apparently to crack his noble crusade has just dropped back a little bit taking over now tiger beetle southern voyage is trying hard to box on then in third is noble crusade a little break back to brian wood but it's tiger beetle who leads 150 yards to go southern voyage is mithering the leader all the way home and is coming back towards the outside southern voyage not quite done with tiger beetle southern voyage goes to the judge market Very suspended they came clear of noble crusade then brian wood and at cedar rapids Oh, that's going to go right to the wire, isn't it? Very close indeed. Tiger Beetle had been in front for th much of the last furlong, but it looks as though, through persistence, Southern Voyage and Paul Mulrennan has nicked it. Victory. He's just a bit on his toes at the back of the pack there in the nose band. Seems to be okay. The runners are walking steadily towards the stunning tape, and they're off. The Market the in play. Insurance maiden hurdle race. They're heading towards the first of 12 flights of hurdles. Wigglesworth, one of the first to begin in the red and yellow jacket, also prominent on the inside, is uh, Who's the Governor in the purple with the yellow diamond and diamonds on the sleeves. Racing back in third position, Nonna Lisa, a little bit deeper in the green and purple colours, followed through by Grove Ash in the royal blue and yellow striped jacket. Centre pack is Master Temper in the red and white, towards the rear of the field, both Academi. And no fixed charges, all popping over flight number two, OK. And heading up towards us, as 10 lengths first to last then as they head towards the winning post with two full circuits in front of them in the maiden hurdle. And who's the governor? And Alan Corley will head past us on the first occasion with a lead of three lengths to Wigglesworth and Sam Twist and Davis racing second. A couple of lengths to Grove Ash right on the inside of Nonna Lisa. Master Temper and no fixed charges are racing together. And a length half to Accordini at the back of the seven runner field. On the turn towards the far side of the track, then for the first time, next up will be flight number three, which is right opposite the grandstands. A little bit of a run before they reach it, and up front, no change. Who's the governor in front by two and a half to Wigglesworth racing second? A similar margin back to no fixed charges, who makes ground on the outside of Nonna Lisa. Grove Ash continues to go the shortest way towards the inside rail. Couple of lengths to Master Templar towards the back with Accordini as they negotiate the third. Once again, they've all taken the third flight of hurdles safely. And on they go to the middle one in the back stretch. Flight four upcoming then. Who's the governor? Continues in front. The lead's about a length and a half now to Wigglesworth Racing second. A similar margin back to no fixed charges and Grove Ash who continue to race together in third and fourth. Clearing the middle flight, not at least they're just a little bit slow now towards the rear of the field with Accordini. And Master Templar also towards the back of the pack. Next up is going to be flight number five. Into the wings of it they go. Who's the governor? Sees a stride, pops over nicely and got away by three parts of a length. Wigglesworth just inching a little bit closer in second. No fixed charges. 
in the noseband is next in the field and the blue and yellow striped jacket on the inside of Grove Ash and Nona Lisa making ground again out wide. Green, purple and pink colours. Towards the back of the field, the black and yellow of Academia and the red and white of Master Templar. And now they're turning on a long run before they reach flight number six, the first of the two in the home straight. Still well over a circuit to travel, of course. Taking the right-handed turn away from the back stretch, who's the governor in front by just over a length to Wigglesworth and Sam Twiston Davis racing in second. Three parts back to No Fixed Charges and Tom Scudamore. And then a further length to Nonna Lisa and Tabith Worsley, who's next in the field. Grove Ash behind those continues on the inside rail. Master Templar still towards the back, and so too is Accordini. Down the straight they come then, heading back towards flight six, which will be the second last in a circuit's time. And it's still Who's the Governor has pretty much made all for Alan Corley so far at flight number six. Who's the Governor? Reached for it a little bit, but got away fine and leads by a length to Wigglesworth Racing second. Grove Ash still going the shortest way for David Noonan on the inside behind them from no fixed charges. And Master Templar, Nonna Lisa out wide and Accordini at the back there. Much more closely grouped now, only about six lengths separating the runners as they head up towards us. A circuit to go in this Mansion Bets Festival Faller Insurance Maiden Hurdle Race. And all to play for here. Who's the Governor goes past us with a lead of half a length to Wigglesworth Racing in second position. Out deep Nonna Lisa towards the inside Grove Ash and no fixed charges between those horses. Master Templar still held up at the back, so too Accordini as they swing right-handed then towards the far side of the track for the final time. Next up is going to be flight number eight, the hurdle opposite the grandstands in the back stretch. Three down the far side, two in the home straight, turning right-handed towards the eighth then. And who's the governor still there, but only by a nostril now into Wigglesworth racing second. That line of three behind Grove Ash, the inside of no fixed charges and Nonna Lisa out deep as they take the eighth. Accordini and Master Templar. Master Templar just getting a reminder from Fergus Gregory towards the back of the field. So down they go to the center flight in the back stretch. This is four flights of hurdles from home. It's flight number nine. Who's the governor? Narrowly to Wigglesworth racing second. Grove Ash right behind them with no fixed charges. Mistake at that one by who's the governor. Knocked it flat. Wigglesworth is now upsides. They go towards three out. This is flight number 10. Wigglesworth and who's the governor are stride for stride as they reach the 10th flight of hurdles. Over in third position was Grove Ash traveling strongly to the inside. Nonna Lisa still right there from no fixed charges. Accordini and Master Templar still in touch but ridden along and more reminders for him at the back of the field. So they're closing in on the end of the back stretch. They're taking the right-handed turn, which carries them back towards home. Just the two flights to go. A long run before they leave the ground at flight 11, which is two out. Wigglesworth is pressing on here. Opens up by a length. Who's the governor? Chased along in second. Grove Ash behind them now comes off the bridle as no fixed charges. Makes ground out wide of runners. On the turn towards the home straight, Accordini is through for fifth. Nonna Lisa is next, and then the struggling master Templar into the straight. They come then a long run before the second last. Wigglesworth in front by three parts to no fixed charges, who's trying to close in in second for Tom Scudamore. Behind those, Grove Ashes next. Accordini, black and yellow, is still trying to run on. Then the early leader, who's the governor. Here's a second last flight. Wigglesworth, but only by three parts to no fixed charges, who's getting much closer than the near side. On landing, it's Wigglesworth by a half to no fixed charges. Charges in second. Grove Ash and Accordini kept going behind. Then Master Templar. Here's the final flight. No fixed charges. Jump to the front. No fixed charges. Opens up. Wigglesworth tries to battle back towards the far side. They settle down to fight it out. Inside the final half furlong they go. No fixed charges. Opens up by a length and a half to two. And in second, Wigglesworth can't respond. This will go the way of Neil Mulholland and Tom Scudamore. No fixed charges wins to Wigglesworth in second. Market Accordini suspended. Grove Ash was next. And then Master Templar. It's gone the way of no fixed charges. Tom Scudamore for Neil Mulholland and the Neil Mulholland Racing Club. Tom's seventh winner of the campaign. And good to see that that fall, which wasn't a nice, nice no. fall at Worcester last time, has been left has left no mark whatsoever on, on no fixed charges. And he's, he's won that very convincingly. Yes, he has. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure he's ever, ever touched it with a whip because well, it was just looking like it might lug into its right after the last. He's just pushed it out, hands and heels, made sure it's kept the straight course. But it's firmly on top of Master Templar by the line. Wigglesworth. Uh, Wigglesworth, sorry. No, that, that's... Wigglesworth, sorry. 
That's all right. Yes. Pretty level towards the four in the early stages. Towards the outside, glory from Molly might just take the advantage from Cotty and Abrisha. Crafty Hugo running around the middle at flight number one. But they're all safely over. Duke of Doyen is the early back marker. And not much room on the inside from Mars Harper there as Abrisha was a little green over that one. And Boeing was also a little green over that. But they've settled into something of order. And it is now hollow sound with Obrisha on the rail. Glory for Molly, the near side. Cotty, Irish, Poseidon, Digby and Mars Harper in front of young Jack Yates and King's Vow with Colour Star next. Then towards the inside is Bell's Benefit. Behind Bell's Benefit, towards the back of the field, all thumbs up in front of Boeing. And they've already gone clear from Duke of Doyen. Racing on now towards flight number three, hollow sound. Glory for Molly just outside. Obrisha is on the inner. And they're the one, two, three as they race come towards the fourth, just in behind them, Irish Poseidon is prominent. Chloe for Molly is just towards the outside, ahead of Irish Poseidon. Mars Harper's on the inner, Cotty's in the group. Digby is next with young Jack Lakes and Colours Star with King's Vow. Crafty Hugo's just towards the outer, being followed by Bell's Benefit, who's next. All thumbs up, Boeing and Duke of Doyen. Racing into the turn to go along the back straight, and it's hollow sound who leads by half a length or more to in second spot is Glory for Molly. In third is Obrisha with Cotty next as Hollow Sound. Just had a quick look before the rail or before the wing of that one. And Boeing at the back has been very awkward, almost unshipped, has now found himself a long way behind and Ryder trying to recover the iron. So it is out front, Hollow Sound from Glory for Molly, Obrisha and just in behind Cotty, Irish Poseidon, Digby and young Jack Yates, Mars Harper the inside. King's Vow is next, just in front of Crafty Hugo, who's to the outside of Colour Star. They're in front of Old Thumbs Up and Bell's Benefit, who's next, and they're clear from Boeing and Duke of Doyen. But it's Hollow Sound and Eamon Corbett who take them along from Glory for Molly on the outside. Shane Fitzgerald bidding for a double. Obrisha is next, racing in third under Liam McKenna. And they're the leading group of three as they go to race on towards the mile pole. Just in behind them, Irish Poseidon is close up. Digby not far off them with young Jack Yates and Mars Harper, who's next, as they continue along the back straight now and race just behind the clubhouse. Hollow Sound, the one that disappeared with the advantage. Returning from a 229 day absence with the lead as we wait to see them reappear. Obrisha was right up there too, as was Glory from Molly and Cotty. Mars Harper wasn't far behind, as was Irish Poseidon, who was in a striking position. But we wait for them to reemerge now and they're in the uphill run. And it is still hollow sound from in second spot. Glory from Molly, Irish Poseidon racing in third as they race now towards the top of the track and shortly begin the descent in the Armatus Fire and Security Limited maiden hurdle. Hollow sound from Glory from Molly, Irish Poseidon. Digby's right on the outside. Cotty and Obrisha are next. Young Jack Yates, King's Vow, Mars Harper trying to pick up all thumbs up behind Colour Star, then just ahead of Crafty Hugo and then Bell's Benefit racing on now towards the flight at the top of the track, three from home. And it's Glory from Molly with on the inside hollow sound. Irish Poseidon is right there with Digby towards the outside in this quartet. Have Mars Harper just behind them. Cotty's trying to come through as Glory for Molly surrenders lead. A breach and hollow sound have dropped back and now it's Digby in the blue cap with on the inside Irish Poseidon. Mars Harper's just trying to get on terms with them and then Cotty. Colin Starr is next with a breach and all thumbs up at the second last. Irish Poseidon. Mars Harper the near side and in between horses is Digby. Colin Starr is next with Cotty as they go now towards the final flight. Mars Harper. Digby be and on the far side Irish Poseidon and it's Mars Harper over on the near side who's trying to lengthen away in the closing stages. Mars Harper is just holding on to a length and a half to two lead for Luke Dempsey, Denise Foster and Pioneer Racing. Mars Harper from the fast finishing colours star, tight third Digby Irish Market Poseidon. Market suspended. Next with King's Vow and then all thumbs up for Brescia Bell's Benefit, Young Jack Yates, Hollow Sound and Molly Forgot Glory in front of Crafty Hugo and Boeing is the final finisher. Duke of Doyen pulled up at the top of the track. Market in play. Handicap, and uh, early on to the inside, Eclipse de Luna, Fair Mac, who made the running last time out. Looks like he's going to be employed as front runner again here by Franny Norton, and moves away by a couple of lengths and puts a little bit of pace to the race as well. To in second position, Eclipse de Luna, then in third, Bolt away, and going keenly at the back end of the field, both Desert History and Sabusi. So it is Fair Mac making the journey down the far side of the track and around about two and a half lengths away at this point over Eclipse de Luna and then the favourite bolt away up towards the outside the pink cap. Dark blue colours with the orange stars Desert History and away to the inside Sabusi at the back of the field under David Allen 
as they now prepare to make the left-handed turn out of the far side. Sabusi just throwing his head around there at the rear of the field, but no more than four to five lengths off Fair Mac, who has been granted a fairly uncontested lead, making the journey back towards home and just over five furlongs left to go. So they're now at halfway. Fair Mac straightens up in front by a couple of lengths over Bolt away the white sleeves. Then Eclipse de Luna towards the inner, just shaken along there for a stride or two. And at the back end of the field, still both Desert History and Sabusi will be played late as they now work their way inside their final half a mile. Fair Mac in front, controlling things here. Travels better than a few as well. Bolt away though in second, looks uh, pretty menacing. Gets to within a half length of the leader. Then Desert History down the outside of Eclipse de Luna, who's now flat out, and Sabusi trying to pick up down the far outside. A couple of furlongs left to travel here. Fair Mac is now being challenged for the lead by Boltaway. Boltaway the pink cap, Fair Mac towards the inside. The two of them have broken clear. They're five, oh, four or five lengths away now from in third Eclipse de Luna. And then Desert History and Sabusi inside the final furlong. Fair Mac certainly not allowing Boltaway all his own way. Boltaway came through with that challenge, is just about getting on top of the situation. Fair Mac though battles back towards the inside oh it's tight near side maybe Baltimore. market Baltimore suspended in a photo i think paul mulrennan might have just held on here he was hands and heels all the way to the line but he knows that those mark johnson horses aren't just going to fold and drop away and fair mac didn't under franny norton we had two strong jockeys in the previous race paul and david allen here we've had another two paul and franny norton and fair mac fought back tenaciously led early on as so many of mark johnson's do of course and had led the time before as well looks as though paul's got it it's a cheeky win i think he'll breathe a sigh of relief though having uh, held on Confirming. market suspended yeah two week three third four eclipse to luna we were talking before the off weren't we about the racing for division one of the Manchester market Bets, the in play bet, get a uh, bet 10 get 20 handicap hurdle race and the color change southfield tour is the first to begin the gray horse jockey in the white with the blue cross belts check sleeves and a red cap in front by a length and a half to ace time racing second wood emery is close up third from excalibur another gray horse in fourth position they're followed by watchman and then uh, behind that one black lightning center pack racing just in advance of berserter kokara boy is settled towards the back of the field so two top copy star lay Fremantle is second last and winford is the overall backmarker and he'd be 12 to 15 off the leader which is southfield tour as they take the turn into the back stretch for the first time heading off towards flight number one southfield tour in front by a couple then to ace time as they close in on this first flight of hurdles and uh, southfield tour just a bit guessy at the first but he got away with it okay and he leads by a couple as they race opposite us down towards the center flight flight number two Southfield Tour by two and a half to Ace Time Racing second in red and yellow colours and the striped jacket of Wood Emery to the inside of the grey Excalibur. Behind those is Watchman in the green with the red hoop and white sleeves as they sail over the second. Flight Lightning just a little bit guessy was out jumped there by Kilkara Boy and Berserter. Top Cappy Star towards the back with Lay Free Mantle and Winford is the overall back marker. As the leader goes down towards flight number three, Southfield Tour over the third. They've all negotiated the third fine and Southfield Tour and Tom uh, Bellamy continues at a decent pace here in front by two and a half to Ace Time and Brian Hughes racing in second place right behind those races Watchman in third position and then Wood Emery towards the inside Excalibur is next in the field that one's followed through by Black Lightning who's racing a little bit deeper in the yellow jacket and towards the inside the yellow with a black hoop and a quartered cap is Kilcara Boy uh, behind those berserker in black and orange no move from that one yet also well back lay Fremantle in the maroon and white chevrons check sleeves horse with a huge white face top cappy star is next in the red with the black spots and the overall back marker at the rear of the field is winford so down the straight they come back towards the next flight of hurdles which is going to be flight number four and no change on the front end it continues to be southfield tour in front by about two and a half as they arrive at flight number four race time racing in second wood emery is back in third position and watchman between horses jumps up well behind those excalibur followed by black lightning and then behind those kilcara boy and berserter lay Fremantle still well back as they negotiate the flight which will be the last in the circuit's time 
Top Cup, East Star second last, and no move from Winford and Nathan Mosscrop, still at the rear of the field, and 10 to 12 off the leader, which is Southfield Tour. So they're past their point of departure, and they're passing us now with a circuit to go. Southfield Tour in front by about two and a half to Watchman, who's gone second. Ace Time is third from Wood Emery, right on the inside fence in fourth position. Excalibur continues to race next in the field. And then Black Lightning in chasing a little bit closer. They're racing deep for Tabitha Worsley. Kilcara Boy is next. Lay Fremantle makes up a little bit of ground in maroon and white on the outside of Berserter and then Top Capi Star and Winford at the back of the field. So they're swinging into the back stretch once again, heading off to the first of those three flights of hurdles over on the far side. Next up is going to be flight number six. Southfield Tours uh, only got a half length to spare now over Watchman Racing second. They're both good. It's the sixth though. Ace time was out jumped by Wood Emery. Got a reminder afterwards. Excalibur between horses still travels okay. Uh, behind those Black Lightning traveling well from Kilcara Boy, then Berserta. Lay Free Mantle, Top Capi Star, and Winford are still the back three as they race on towards the center flight in the back stretch. Flight seven, a flying leap by the leader, Kilcara Boy, who continues to lead. A Southfield Tour, I should say, as they, as they go down towards the final flight in the, fi in the back stretch. This is flight number eight. So Southfield Tour's made all so far over in front by a half to Watchman Racing second. Black Lightning getting closer out deep. Excalibur in the mix behind them. Berserters on the move from well back in the field. Kilcara Boy is next. And they're followed by Top Cappy Star is also making a little bit of a forward move. Then Lay Free Mantle. Wood Emery's dropped back. Winford is next. And dropping right out is Ace Time as they leave the back stretch behind them. Then Southfield Tour is being joined by Watchman and three deep of those. A smooth traveling Black Lightning. Behind that one, Berserta right on the premises now behind the pace. Excalibur is next. Lay Free Mantle running a big race is through into sixth position as they take the turn back towards the home straight and head off towards the second last flight number nine. Uh, up front on the inside, Watchman near side, Black Lightning. Behind that, Excalibur back for more. Berserta with the orange cap is trying to close in. And behind that is Lay Free Mantle towards the near side, who's still closing. They go down towards the second last flight of hurdles. Black Lightning in front by three parts to Excalibur. Lay Free Mantle at a huge price towards the near side. He's jumping in third position. Berserta is next. And then from the back of the field, Winford over on the far sides trying to close in. Black Lightning joined by Excalibur. Winford next, Lay Free Mantle, mistake by Berserta. They go inside the final furlong now. Black Lightning driven up on the far side, the near side. Excalibur trying to close. Lay Free Mantle still running on behind. Black Lightning in front for Tabitha Worsley as they drive up towards the line. Black Lightning will go on to score for Georgie Howell. Wins it well back in second. Market suspended. Mantle, huge run from him in third. Winford for fourth in front of Kilcara Boy and Berserta. That's a lovely, lovely result. And you can see at the line how much that means to Tabitha Worsley, riding a winner for a, a mum under rules. Um, really special result. That'll mean a great deal to them. And getting the better of Excalibur and Emma smith Chasson on the flight, who looked a huge threat at the last. But yeah, what more can you say? Yeah, I mean, I think that is the first winner that they've had to get under rules, isn't it? So it's a very, it's a very special moment. Yeah, couldn't be more pleased for them. Of course, the sub lieutenant gave a big thrill in the getting round in the Grand National. But I mean, you, I, you know, going out of the and they're away from market the suspended so wasn't the market best away. in play in the far side from lady airsome and hello you showing a lot of speed in the purple jacket down the near side gypsy lady and meanwhile making a, a beeline for the stand side rallies oscula who's going to do her own thing here racing apart from the others the leaders are chased then by An Anna Dora, and then behind those is floaters picking up ground and then towards the back of these elliptic and cache and back in the field to prettiest and sunstrike is some way back hello my darling is trying to chase after oscula towards the stand side but a long way behind at this stage and eve lodge is well detached as well at the back as they run down towards the final quarter mile hello you challenged by gypsy lady and anadora on the far side floaters coming there well under frankie de lady airsome is just in behind these and then uh, 
trying to run on as well is Sandrine as they run down towards the final furlong. Oscula still alone on the stand side. Sandrine comes through on the far side of Hello You. Hello You and Sandrine fighting it out. Prettius is staying on well with Elliptic as they race inside the final furlong. Sandrine from Hello You. Oscula doing okay on the near side from Prettius, but it's Sandrine that gallops clear to win the Albany. In second, Hello Market you. suspended. Maybe tight for third. Oscula on the near side of Prettiest. And they were followed home by Cache. And they were clear of the others. Market in play. For this, the three month of racing TV straight mile handicap. Uh, the first one to show Copper and Five in a sheepskin noseband together with Forest Falcon. Forest Falcon, Copper and Five racing ahead of six strings in the pink and light blue. And uh, they're being chased through by Saffron, who's in the white and orange colours. Ilzaim now making up a little bit of ground that was lost at the start. The yellow and black striped jacket narrowly ahead of both Titan Rock. And uh, Alarey, who actually won the final of this series uh, for 2020, uh, back in October as they gallop their way down the middle of the track and uh, towards the final five furlongs or so. They're being led by Copper and Five under Faye McManaman, the far side of Forest Falcon and uh, Franny Norton. There's not a great deal to separate the two. Ilzaim continues to work his way through the pack and is now up into a dispute of third place. Alareg on the right also coming a little nearer. Uh, six strings is all smothered up at this stage. Near side is Safran and uh, Titan Rock is the back marker in the maroon jacket of what is ultimately a very tight early group field working their way down inside their final three furlongs now. Alaray coming with a challenge over to the far side, ridden up to throw down the gauntlet to Al Zaim who has also made plenty of ground up from the rear. Copper and five this side has been there all the way. He's now coming under the whip. Titan Rock is picking up back in behind them. Then six strings. Forest Falcon has faded and at Safran will not be landing a blow from there. A furlong left to run. Il Zaim in front but now just edging left and Titan Rock continues this strong run over towards the near side. Alaray is on the far side and then six strings. It's Titan Rock who's gone to the front as they go close home and Titan Rock pushed out by Jason Hart from Royal Ascot to Red Card. Market Rock suspended. Win for Jason Hart and John Quinn. Six strings down the near side of Alareg and Il Zaim. Further back to Copper and Five. Ah, oh, there's no stopping this team in form, are they? What a great day they had yesterday at Royal Ascot Highway Princess in the Buckingham Palace, Quinn and Hart. And they've teamed up again here, the Irishman and the Scotsman, Titan Rock, the winner, and so tough as well. Didn't Alareg uh, run a good race back to form on the far side, finishing third? Ilza Eam travelled sweetly through the race, edged left though, just gave the race away a little bit in the closing stages. So it's an eight. Yeah, eight has won it, no doubt about it. We'll tidy up the miners in a moment, but uh, Titan Rock, the winner under Jason Hart. They didn't seem to go overly quick here. Let's bring Steve in again. Um, yeah, right of shot there you can see in the striped cap, that is El Zaim, uh, uh, or El Zaim, rather. I've had trouble with that name all day. Uh, at the back of the field, you've got Al Areg. Pull forward towards the starter, and uh, they're off. Racing for Division 2. Market best, best in play. Best 10, get 20 handicap hurdle race. Kennedy's Field is straight to the front. The white jacket with the blue sleeves and a maroon cap. Where would you get it also prominent? White jacket, blue spots, red cap, near side horse and the white cheek pieces. Followed through by Taboo Beach Boy in the maroon with the white hoop sleeves racing in third. Zara's Universe close up behind those from Peach Choice on the inside. Brief acquaintance with that one. Behind those Midnight Auroras settled towards the rear of the field. So too has Blood Eagle. And the overall back marker is Glacier Fox. And that one would be 12 to 15 off the leader, which is Kennedy's field as they head into the back stretch for the first time. Facing up to the first of 10 flights of hurdles then. Kennedy's field in front by about three parts to where would you get it? Racing in second place. Taboo Beach Boy over in third. Zara's Universe took that in fourth from Pete's Choice on the inside in the green and black quartered jacket and then the maroon with the yellow sleeves of Brief Acquaintance. The Grey Horse American Craftsman a little bit worse than centre pack followed through by Midnight Aurora who's sitting third last at this stage in the purple colours. Then towards the back Blood Eagle, the white with the red cross belts and Glacier Fox yellow with the red cross belts jumping upsides him. 
field just concertinaing a little bit as they go towards the third flight of hurdles only about uh, eight lengths first to last now as they arrive at flight number three kennedy's field over in front to where would you get it who jumped nicely out wide taboo beach boy just in behind them so to peach choice on the inside and deeper out zara's universe the red jacket with the white hoop spots on the sleeves and cap deepest of all is brief acquaintance they're followed through by midnight aurora and then still towards the back american craftsman in front of glacier fox and the overall back marker now is blood eagle and keelan woods would have that about 10 lengths off the leader as they leave the back stretch for the first time and take the right-handed turn back towards us the two flights of hurdles are waiting them down in the home straight and next up and next up is going to be flight number four kennedy's field then and alan corley in front by a length to where would you get it and harry bannister racing in second taboo beach boy a little bit deeper for ross chapman and then on the inside is pete's choice racing with zara's universe american craftsman might have made a place to the inside just squeeze for a stride or two brief acquaintance out wide uh, behind that one is midnight aurora no move is yet from glacier fox or from blood eagle who are both still towards the back of the field although glacier fox is making up a little bit of ground deep on the track as they negotiate flight number four all over that okay and up towards flight number five they come kennedy's field the far side the near side where would you get it once again jumped well tabu beach boy in behind them and then away before peach choice on the fence glacier fox now with him zara's universe three deep and four deep the road along brief acquaintance midnight aurora traveling okay towards the back of the field with american craftsman and blood eagle is the overall back marker so pass as they go, all to play for here, only eight lengths first to last as they begin to turn right-handed to race away from the enclosures and head towards the far side. And the front two continue to be the front two throughout Kennedy's field on the inside of where would you get it? Taboo Beach Boy right behind those. And that's followed through by Zara's Universe and then Pete's Choice on the inside of Glacier Fox who's now racing centre pack. Into the back stretch they go then, right opposite the grandstands towards flight number six and up front no change still kennedy's field as they go to the sixth flight of hurdles leads by a length and a half to where would you get it jumping second taboo beach boy is next mistake by blood eagle towards the back of the field there pressing on towards the middle one in the back stretch then kennedy's field taboo beach boy where would you get it and then zara's universe and glacier fox still improving towards the inside american craftsman is next they're followed through by midnight aurora uh, road along towards the back of the field is brief acquaintance blood eagle is next and pulling up at the back now is pete's choice as they go towards the final flight in the back stretch this is flight number eight and kennedy's field is over in front where would you get its upsides though right behind those zara's universe from taboo beach boy and that's followed through by glacier fox behind that midnight aurora trying to get a little bit closer under maximum pressure now his brief acquaintance uh, american craftsman towards the back of the pack they've dropped blood eagle and they're leaving the back stretch behind them turning towards the home straight with two flights to go in division two of the mansion bets best of all bet 10 get 20 handicap and where would you get it's laying down a challenge to kennedy's field where would you get it's gone on zara's universe is now giving chase in second position uh, kennedy's field is next from taboo beach boy as they swing back towards the home straight there followed by glacier fox and then midnight aurora down towards the second last where would you get it the white with the blue spots red cap to the far side zara's universe near side red with a white hoop down towards the final flight glacier fox is now through for third the yellow with the red cross bells at two out then where would you get it into the wings of it by a length to zara's universe in second glacier fox still trying to close but where would you get it led heading down towards the final flight of hurdles where would you get it by just over a length to zara's universe who's persistent in second good leap again by where would you get it who's jumped really well throughout inside the furlong they go where would you get it driven out by harry bannister zara's universe trying to respond in second for john kington but where would you get it racing up towards the line is going to score for neville ender sarah ender the trainer and harry bannister the jockey where would you get it? it's gone on to score well market second, suspended universe glacier fox for third and taboo beach boy in fourth where would you get it has won for sarah ender neville ender the winning owner harry bannister the successful jockey is a first win under rules for this horse and it was a and market market in play sharply away on the inside in the maroon sleeves 
but uh, quickly attended to by Bellocchio. Out wide, Tasman Bay got away fairly well. Nobody looking terribly keen to make the running. Bellocchio just about going on now ahead of Tasman Bay. The Mediterranean is out wide. Gear up is getting a bit of cover now. Back on the inside in the hands of James Doyle. The nose banded title and Alan Kerr is held up at the back of the field. Ryan Moore just racing slightly apart from the others on the Mediterranean here as they make the run downhill towards Swinley Bottom. But it's Bellocchio that just leads the way in this King Edward the Seventh Stakes. Bellocchio and Sylvester de Souza from Tasman Bay gear up on the inside the Mediterranean wide in the purple and white jacket and then title and Alan Kerr about to swing right-handed as they pass the mile marker and Bellocchio by two lengths or so to Tasman Bay in second a similar margin back to gear up on the inside of the Mediterranean and then Alan Kerr with plenty of cover in behind these and title probably just the back marker. Meanwhile, Bellocchio just opening up a little bit as they meet the rising ground. Bellocchio by a good three and a half, maybe four lengths now. Taken wide is Tasman Bay as they race now towards the home turn. Tasman Bay going towards the wide outside. Medi the Mediterranean is tracking out wide-ish, then uh, gear up, followed by title and Alan Kerr. So running now towards the final five furlongs and they spurn the inside here and it's Bellocchio that leads the way from Tasman Bay, the Mediterranean, gear up towards the inner, the nearest horse to the inside. They're almost racing against the outside running rail. Alan Kerr and Title as they run on now inside the final half mile. They're going to have to angle across to meet the home turn and Bellocchio still leads the way by a couple of lengths or so to Tasman Bay. Then gear up, followed by Alan Kerr. The Mediterranean is pushed along and title at the rear of the field. Inside the final three, and they turn for the judge. And it's Bellocchio who's dictated the pace here under Sylvester de Souza. Very good front running jockey, but Tasman Bay with a big chance. Then gear up, and Alan Kerr now begins a charge on the outside and title behind these. And finally, the Mediterranean. Tasman Bay just took it up, but here's Alan Kerr, very quick to challenge. Title stays on Bellocchio. Gear up. As they race on inside the final furlong and Alan Kerr has struck the front narrowly to Tasman Bay then title and Bellocchio and racing up towards the line Alan Kerr from Tasman Bay what a great attitude this colt has got Alan Kerr follows up his classic trial win at market Hill. suspended with the seventh stakes from Tasman Bay in second title the Mediterranean gear up and Bellocchio Go well, spicy in a noseband is away well. Races quite enthusiastically. Alessandro Lori alongside in black and orange. Further back then to uh, Bibbidi Bobbidi Boo in the blue colours racing third. Get Funky is close up in behind them with Bombastic towards the uh, far side. Now the black with the uh, pink spots. That one keeps company with Class Clown. The colour alteration now the white and dark green stripes of uh, Willing to Please is over on the far side. Uh, Lexington Bullet in light blue colours right at the back of the field. May have taken a false step in the very early early stages of the race that one uh, back with that one is mythical madness and Glen Gary just in front of him as they head on down towards the uh, final three furlongs of their journey bibbidi bobbidi boo oggly doggly side of go well spicy of the leading pair up in between them the lightly raced get funky then bombastic ahead of an improving Glen Gary class clown is racing next in midfield right over to the far side is willing to please they're being followed no! by Lexington bullet and mythical madness and Alessandro Alori who's now dropped to the tail of the field under two furlongs left to go bibbidi bobbidi boo with on the far side willing to please then bombastic further back to the white face get i'm out of here man towards the near side class clown follows and then lexington bullet who's putting in some good late work bibbidi bobbidi boo with on the far side willing to please willing to please now strikes the front mythical madness the yellow sleeves and cap is rattling towards the near side but didn't quite make it market suspended madness it might go to the judge get funky up in behind them with bibbidi bobbidi boo We've been treated to some great sport today, haven't we? And this is a canny... And they're off. Ma and one of the market in play. Red and yellow jacket racing deep. Also prominent is Townsend towards the inside and then Bally home in the black and orange. Pell jacket, uh, Deiran de Kejac is next in the field, followed by Gedereason in the silver and orange and the black and green quarters of Monty's Award at the back of the field. So taking the paddock, turn towards the far side of the track. They don't leave the ground until they reach the first on the far side. 
And as they turn towards it, it's Lord Bryan and Sean Bowen in front by a couple of lengths to the Royal Blue and Red of Townsend racing in second. Ballyhoom is close up third from Deran de Karjak sitting towards the inside of Get a Reason and Monty's Award at the back of the six runner field. Paige Fuller's got that one about eight to ten off the leader which is Lord Bryan as they close in then on fence number one. Right opposite the grandstands, good leap by the leader. All streaming over fence one and pressing on to an open ditch. Fence number two upcoming for Lord Bryan, who leads by two and a half to Townsend racing in second. Similar margin back to Bally Home racing third. Then Deran de Kajak who's racing with Get A Reason and two and a half to Monty's Award at the back. Here's the ditch then, another lovely leap by the leader. Get A Reason just a little bit slower back in the field, no damage done. Heading off to another plain fence, fence number three comes up pretty quickly and it's Lord Bryan who leads down towards it. At it now, jumps well, a little bit right-handed but negotiated it fine to Townsend taking it in second position and then Bally Home racing third. Get a reason and Deran de Kerjak and Monty's award. Here's the second of the ditches, fence number four then for Lord Bryan. Once again, jumps nicely, all sailing over that okay. So they're heading towards the end of the back straight for the first time. Quite a run before they leave the ground at the first of the three plain fences in the home straight. That'll be fence five. And Lord Bryan leads by three to in second Townsend, a couple of lengths to Bally Home, and then Deran de Kerjak going the shortest way for Tom Cannon, the white jacket towards the inside of Get a Reason. And the back marker continues to be Vonti's award. No move from that one as yet. So on the swing towards the home straight, they're about to level off towards the fifth fence, and the leader's racing with his ears pricked here, Lord Bryan. Enjoying him out, himself out in front, the 10-year-old in front by three lengths to Townsend, who continues to race second. Another 10-year-old in second, Bally Home. Another 10-year-old is back in third. They're followed by Deran de Kerjak and Get a Reason and Monty's Award at the back. Another flying leap by the leader at fence number five. So pressing on quickly towards the sixth. And Lord Bryan hasn't touched a twig so far at the sixth. Once again, is good. Gets away by a couple in second Townsend they've been the front two throughout and they're heading down to the fence which will be the last in the circuit's time fence seven on this circuit once again good off the front is Lord Bryan and he got away by three lengths to in second Townsend little change in the order so far Bally home the course specialist towards the outside of Keran de Berjak on the inner get a reason still second last and uh, Monty's award at the back so we've got a full circuit to go in our feature, the Mansion Bet hashtag best of all summer plate trial handicap steeplechase. Only seven lengths separating the six runners now. And Lord Bryan, who's led from flag fall, continues to turn to the far side with a lead of a couple for Sean Bowen. Racing second is Townsend and Jamie Neald, and then Bally Home and Liam Harrison racing in third. Keran de Berjak, Tom Cannon to the inside of Get a Reason. And uh, Nathan 20 Montcock seconds. And Paige Fuller just on the move a little bit with Monty's award. The green and black colours taking slightly closer order out wide as they level off to the first plane one down the far side. Fence eight, 10 seconds. Nine, the eight Bryan seconds. The half out of the field there. They go down towards the next. Then fence number nine is upcoming. Down Zero the seconds. The pitch, then Lord Bryan in front by a couple of lengths. To in second position, it still continues to be Townsend as they take the ditch. Bally home out wide, then Keran de Berjac get a reason, and Monty's award still well back as they go towards the next plane fence. Fence number 10 is next. Lord Bryan at the 10th, once again is good. Gets away by a couple to Bally home who's ranging upside Townsend for a share of second. Here's Monty's award making his presence felt out wide as they go towards fence number 11. This is four out, it's the last ditch and another good leap by the leader. Lord Bryan over in front then by a length and a half to Bally home in second. Monty's award is third, Keran de Berjac is next. Now back pedaling through the field is Townsend, get a reason is with him towards the back of the field but they're only four lengths off the leader which is Lord Bryan. They're very closely grouped now as they leave the back stretch behind them turning right handed towards the home straight with just three fences to to go in the feature and it's Lord Bryan who's repelling all borders so far still there by a length and a half to Bally home racing second Monty's award is back in third Keran de Berjac is next then get a reason and the ridden along Townsend down towards this third last fence they come then fence number 12 looming large for Lord Bryan who's encouraged down towards it with a lead of two Lord Bryan at three out then and gets over well 
Bally home in second, mistake by Get a Reason back in the field. Monty's award is third, then uh, Dayran de Kojak. Here's the second last fence then for Lord Bryan. First semblance of a mistake. He just screwed a little bit at that. Bally Holmes almost up sides. Monty's uh, award is behind those. One fence to go. Bally Holmes near side. Another brilliant leap by far side by Lord Bryan, who's back in front here. Inside the final furlong they go. Lord Bryan driven out, goes on by three to four. Bally Holmes can't respond. A fantastic round of jumping bar the second last. Lord Bryan's gone on to score for Peter and Sean Bowen. Market suspended. Second. Monty's award for third get a reason we'll finish fourth and as Malcolm said it was an excellent round of jumping bar the second last and it was that second last that gave Bally home a big chance I, I thought two up Bally home was coming to win because he tries very very hard but there was more in the tank for Lord Brian who was well handicapped on his best, even with Liam's claim. He's it company in play. Hurdle over two and a half mile. Dalaleo was prominent. Right up there too is Ross Comro with Aleem, Rainway Moika, and towards the outside, Burnt Ash. Carlotta Lynn is down the inside, and they're being followed by Little Lady Lou. And there too, Denny's Ginny, Wawa, Lady of the Sea is next. And then comes Likeable Chancer with foul play towards the back of the field. Clundara and Wake the Giant are the back pair. So taking the bend now, that takes them on towards flight number one at the top of the hill, and it's Roscom Row who's going to rise in front from on the inside Dalileo as they take that one safely and begin the descent now to go on down towards flight two and three. Roscom Row leads them down, being followed in second spot by Dalileo on the inside. Outside this one is Aleem. Behind this leading group of three goes Carlotta Lynn on the inside of Burnt Ash. The two greys are split by Railway Mwika. Lady of the Sea is next and wide is foul play in the blue. Likeable chance was inside this one of Wawa. They're being followed behind these by Lady of the Sea who's in front of Wake the Giant and last of all is Clum Dara. This will be the last next time they meet it. Dalileo got tight to it. But out front it is Ross Comro and Dylan Maxwell who are going to lead them up to pass the post first time. From Aleem who's racing in second under Jordan Gainford in third is Burnt Ash and Richie Deegan down the inside Dalileo and Shane Fenlon. Railway Mwick in the pink is next for Owen Kelly and then Carlotta in towards the, in Carlotta towards the inside. And they're being followed towards the outer by foul play Denny's Ginny. Little Lady Lou while one likeable chancer. Wake the Giant is next in front of Lady of the Sea and the back marker remains Clun Dara. So they go over the flight, bring them away from the stands, and it's Roscom Row who is out clear from Aleem, who's racing in second spot as they go to race on towards flight number five. And then Burnt Ash with Dalileo. Carlotta Lynn is on the inside, and this one's outside Railway Mwika as the leader flicks out over that one and begins to take the bend. That'll bring them on into the back straight. And out front, it is Roscom Row who's getting a clear lead now. 10 lengths or more to Aleem, who's racing in isolation in second. Dalileo is on the inside. Railway Mwick is right up with the pace too. As they go over the far side, where Ross Comro lands in front from in second spot, Aleem. In third is Burnt Ash. Dalileo is on the inside. Railway Mwick is in there too. And then Carlotta Lynn, who's next, being followed by Little Lady Lou, Dinny's Ginny. And then an improving foul play makes ground. Wawa is next. And then Wake the Giant on the inside. Oakley, Oakley. Of likeable Chancer. Towards the back of the field, Lady of the Sea is in front of Clundara. But Roscom Row is still clear from Aleem and Burnt Ash and Railway Mwika who's next. Behind these is Dalileo with Carlotta Lynn next and then Little Lady Lou who's towards the outside. Foul play is wider again as they go to race on now towards the flight behind the clubhouse. And out front, Roscom Row, the son of Getaway with a clear lead from in second spot Aleem. Then Railway Mwick on the outside of Burnt Ash and just behind them is Carlotta Lynn with foul play who's right on their heels with on the outside Lady of the Sea who's made ground, Dalileo's on the inside, Little Lady Lou is next as they land over that one with the exception of the leader they're very tightly bunched but Roscom Row is a long way clear of Aleem, Burnt Ash, Railway Mwick, Dalileo, foul play no! and then Lady of the Sea with Carlotta Lynn moving off the rail, Wake the Giants trying to pick up in behind these Dinny's Ginny, Clundar and Wawa towards the back as they take the climb now that's going to bring them on up past the half mile pole and towards the third last and it's Ross Comro clear from in second Aleem, Railway and Wicca, likeable chance has gone up on the outside as they and Carlotta Lynn is beginning to make ground back into it again 
has lost one of the turn there. Likeable Chancer came down at the turn at the top of the track. So they go now towards the third last and Roscombe Road's leads has come right back now. And they come to challenge Roscombe Row. Alima's on the inside. Wake the Giant. Carlotta Lynn is next. Wawa from the back with Railway and Wicker ridden. Dalileo's next with foul play. I'm out of here, man. The hill and Alim has gone to the front with Wake the Giant who travels strongly on the outside in the yellow. Wawa is behind them with now ridden along Roscombe Row and Carlotta Lynn next. It's Alim at the second last over from Wake the Giant. Wawa mistaken gone is Roscombe Row there. Hampered foul play. To the final flight they go. It's Alim in front from Wake the giant in second as they race inside the closing stages. A leam is being pushed clear for Jordan Gainford and Denise Foster, and it's a leam who's going to take this one in good style. And the colours of Paul and Paul Doyle partnership. A leam for Jordan Gainford and Denise Foster win it in second. Is Wake market the giant. suspended. A lot of in his four railway make a foul player next with Della Leo and Little Lady Lou in front of Ginny's Ginny and Clune Dara. And they're a long way suspended to sharing speed Munister on the far market and in play on the near side under Frankie de Tori take it up readily in the early stages followed by a case of you and Jumbi is close up as well mighty Gurkha accelerating again on the far side of Campanelli on the near side dragon symbol is right there as well and then uh, behind these is sways are very handy indeed uh, they're trapped by Isabella Giles and Lippet Zana Dan Dalla towards the stand side and in behind those measure of men Magic on the far side, Happy Romance. Uh, being driven along is 5,000 to 1. Out the back, the Learjet at this stage and Laws of Indices as they race down the centre to stand side. Oakley, Oakley. Mighty Gurkha and Campanelli. Uh, on the near side, a case of you with every chance with Dragon Symbol coming there. Swayza being pushed along as well. Then Moonista on the far side, Happy Romance. And 5,000 to 1. And Dragon Symbol has come through to take it up from Campanelli. Is trying to fight back as they race on now towards the final first. Along. They're drifting across to the far side. Dragon I'm out of here, man. Campanelli. They have it between them. Dragon Simple on the near side. On the far side, Campanelli trying to repeat last year's Queen Mary win. She's digging deep. Campanelli and Dragon Simple. They pass the post together in the Commonwealth. Market Cup. suspended. Third by measure of magic. Dan Dalla near side. The Learjet running on and laws of indices. That's close. Mar one, market in play plays at racing tv.com handicap and beginning well the purple and yellow colors of maximum risk leads up narrowly from almost an angel the favorite covert mission in the claret jacket is close up as well they're being followed through uh, by bitey legs and then comes autumn aurora who's in blue and green colors away to the right the color alteration the blue with the uh, much lighter blue spots that's uh, hear me raw who's now just tucking in behind covert mission more towards the near side is gianzi who's in dark blue and pink and then towards the rear cully a red cap yellow jacket of Gennato, and the black and orange of royal guard so the field heading on down towards the final three furlongs, just edging across towards the far side of the track this time. Maximum risk is leading up Oakley, to, Oakley. Oakley. to Covert Mission, who travels well under treble-seeking Paul Mulrennan. And then nudged along up in behind them is almost an angel, being pushed a little more harder is Hear Me Roar. On the very far right is Autumn Aurora. Uh, Travelling uh, nicely in behind them is no! Royal Guard as they head down inside the final two. Covert Mission now moves through to take it up together with on the far side Hear Me Roar. They've quickly moved away from the others with Royal Guard staying on to go third maximum risk with a little more to offer I'm out of here man up ahead with under a furlong to run between Hear Me Roar and Covert Mission Hear Me Roar just getting on top though leads up by a length and a half Hear Me Roar in the hands of Connor Beasley driven out and wins by a couple of lengths quite ready success in the end for market Roar, suspended in second Royal Guard came through to take Gabby is quick to begin so too staple head and deep of those shady oaks has also got a good sit as they arrive at fence number one. And Regaby's gone. Regaby's down at the first fence, interfered with a uh, sense of adventure as well. But that one survived as they head on towards the next. Horse and jockey up okay. They're heading off towards fence number two. And down towards it they go. 
shady oaks out wide, the green and red colours, horse in the red headgear, imperial acolyte jumped up well, black jacket, white sleeves, yellow cap, and stable head towards the inside, still prominent, maroon jacket, yellow star. Right behind the front three is uh, One Night in Town, red jacket with the white stars, and that one's racing in company with Alban in the yellow and black. Uh, towards the back of the field is Sense of Adventure, who's recovered from the interference, and the overall back marker is West Class. As they reach the second of the ditches, this is fence number four. Shady Oaks sees a stride, jumps well, and gets away by a couple of lengths. So racing towards the end of the back straight for the first time, it's going to be Shady Oaks with ears pricked, who begins the right-handed turn in front by a couple to Staple Head and the yellow, uh, Maroon Jacket with the yellow star, and then Imperial Acolyte racing in third position. A gap of two and a half lengths to One Night in Town, racing just in advance of Alban, and then towards the back of the field, Sense of Adventure, and West Class in the rear of the field. John Kington's got him of eight to ten off the leader, which is Shady Oaks and Adam Wedge as they turn back towards the home straight for the first time. Next up is going to be fence number five, the first of this line of three playing fences. So down towards fence five they come, and Shady Oaks it is, who leads by two and a half to Staple Head, who's racing in second position. Imperial Acolyte lobbing along on a tight rein in third. At the fifth, just backing off that a little bit, the leader, Shady Oaks, had a look at it, but negotiated it okay. They head off towards the middle one, fence number six, Shady Oaks near side then, staple head deeper, and right behind them, Imperial Acolyte, one night in town, and Alban just inching a little bit closer, sense of adventure towards the back of the field with West Class. This fence will be the last in the circuit's time, fence seven this circuit, all over that okay. And up towards as they come, they're just over a circuit to travel. And it's going to be Shady Oaks who leads past us, still at a very gentle pace here under Adam Wedge, leads by two and a half to Staplehead and James Bowen racing second, three parts to Imperial Acolyte and Sam Twiston Davis in third. A couple more lanes. Oakley, to Oakley. Knight in town and Alan Corley, which is followed by Alban and Philip Armson racing a little bit wider. Then West Class towards the inside for John Kington and uh, the back mark in our sense of adventure and Shane Quinlan. So heading past their point of departure, about to swing right-handed to that line of four fences down the far side. Next up will be fence number eight, and Shady Oaks it is who leads by a couple of lengths. To Staplehead racing second, Imperial Acolyte is back in third. A gap of three lengths behind that to Alban, who's racing fourth. It's pretty much single file traffic as they take the first down the far side. Uh, one night in town, a little bit worse than centre field, West Class with a squeeze, and Sense of Adventure detached by four or five from the... Uh, from the back of the field. So off they go towards the ditch again then. Uh, upcoming is fence number nine. No! And Staplehead's gone for a share of it with Shady Oaks. Jumped up well, Staplehead. Imperial Acolyte behind them. Slightly slow jump by Alban back in fourth position as they head off towards another plain fence, fence number 10. Staple head towards the near side, out wide Shady Oaks, not much to choose between them on landing. Imperial Acolyte still travels okay in third place. A gap of three lengths to Alban, who's just getting a bit of a squeeze. One night in town is next, then West Class. Looks like Sense of Adventure's pulling up at the back of the field. So the field reduced to six as they take the final ditch, and West Class was a little bit slow towards the back. Leaving the back stretch behind them, Shady Oaks back for more on the outside. Staple head on the inner, Imperial Acolyte. I'm out of here, man. And now a gap of maybe five lengths to Alban, a further two more to one night in town, and they've dropped West Class. So on the uh, to turn towards the home straight, just the three fences to go in the Mansion Bet, proud to support British Racing Novices Handicap Steeplechase. Staple head joined again by Shady Oaks as they head down towards the uh, 12th fence. And then a length and a half to Imperial Acolyte, who still seems to be travelling OK and comes back between horses as they approach this third last fence. Shady Oaks joined by Imperial Acolyte and Staple Head at the third last. Imperial Acolyte's gone and interferes with Shady Oaks and a mistake by Alban back in the field as well. Staple Head in front. Shady Oaks trying to respond at the second last. A running right-handed there, Staple Head had to scramble over it. Shady Oaks back for more. One night in town is now staying on between horses. One fence to go, Staple heads desperately tired on the far side, gets over, Shady Oaks the near side, brave between horses, one night in town, inside the final fill and they go, Staple head rousted along by James Bowen, Shady Oaks in second, Staple head being driven right out here is going to record a double for Peter Bowen, it's a win for James Bowen this time, Staple head Market suspended. Oaks, one night in town, and Alban. He, he might have looked like he was all out, but... 
I think um, in play outside, as they did in the earlier race flirting bridges one of the leaders just going on now from shale in the white cap November the German Guineas winner is racing strongly and now takes over from flirting bridge and shale pretty gorgeous is handy next with the white blaze and then alcohol free Empress Josephine in the dark blue jacket further back is lullaby moon on the outside of Potter Pova is a bit keen on the near side, the grey snow lantern held up Mother Earth and finally Fev Rover. And there'd be about eight lengths first to last. And it's the German filly November and David Egan that takes them along passing the five furlong marker. So approaching halfway and about to angle across towards the home turn. And it's November from Flirting Bridge and Pretty Gorgeous. Empress Josephine on the inside. Out wide in the white cap is Shale, followed by Alcohol Free. Then Lullaby Moon Snow Lantern. Oggly doggly. Over Mother Earth still just with Fev Rover behind her as they run now passing the three furlong marker and about to swing the corner in the group one coronation stakes they come wide down the straight and it's November that still leads the way and has got a few of them at it no! in second place flirting bridge pretty gorgeous then alcohol free traveling better than some on the outside mother earth now begins to stay on from Empress Josephine and Snow Lantern also grabbing the ground November being hauled in by I'm out of here gorgeous. man Snow Lantern Lantern, alcohol free delivered on the near side as they race inside the final furlong and alcohol free came to take it up from November. Mother Earth stays on late, but it's alcohol free that has kicked away in the hands of Ashi Murphy and wins the coronation stakes from Snow Market Lantern second, suspended. Mother Earth on the near side of November. Those two fighting it out. Kit. Market in play. Watch race replays at racingtv.com. Handicap listen again has come to the front early over Batoki, who races a close second, and then a little deeper out on the track, Dajran, the red with the dark blue sleeves, white cap, another who's well to the fore. They're being followed through by Hawk in the Wind and Lily Coy. They've gone into a couple of groups. Also over to the uh, far side is Libby Ami. Estad is over there as well. And likewise, Sovereign Moon, who's in the yellow and black colours. But Hockey, together with Listen Again, are closer towards the centre of the track. They're just ahead of Walter. And uh, back up with these is Camarilli, Joe and Millions, two who have met before. They're at the back of that near side group. But now the two groups merge, racing down towards the final three furlongs of the journey. The whole field being led and Oakley, Oakley. So now by Dajran, who in the hands of Franny Norton has opened up by two and a half lengths over Lily Coy and Listen Again. Further back to Camarilli, Joe, who's now beginning to improve. Millions is hard at it down the near side. Then over to the far side is Ami as they race down inside the final quarter of a mile. It is Dajron the one to go and catch. Dajron now with a furlong and a half to go. Chased by Lily Coy. And over to the far side, Libby Ami. Further back to listen again. I'm out of here, man. Dad, but it's all about Dajron here. Dajron enters the final half furlong of the journey with a five length lead and is running right away from them. Look at this. Dajron first, the rest nowhere. Dajron has hosed up. Market suspended. A further back to listen again, Estad, Lily Coy, Camarilli, Joan Millions. Off for the follow up. Market in play. Season open National Hunt flat race. And first to begin is Landacre Bridge towards the near side. Also prominent is Lurgo and just tucked in behind the front runners, Huntsman's Call. A little bit deeper out, the Wild Westerner. And further towards the inside, Luxan. Isla Diamonds has settled towards the rear of the field, so too Holt Whistle. And the overall back marker, another Lord, just taking a little bit of a grip towards the rear of the field. So heading towards the end of the back straight for the first time, Landacre Bridge, the blue and yellow stripes on the inside, a little bit deeper out, Lurgo in the green and white with the yellow cap. A couple of lengths back to Luxan in the white jacket with the red disc and the hooped cap. And then the blue and white jacket of Huntsman's Call racing alongside that one. Three deep of those is the Wild Westerner in the red and white stripes. Behind those, Holt Whistle beige jacket to the inside of the yellow, black, and red colours of Isla Diamonds. And the overall back marker is another Lord in the red with the yellow diamond and the check sleeves. So down the straight they come for the first time. And it's Landacre Bridge and Jamie Hamilton setting a reasonable pace in front by just over a length to Lurgo racing in second. Huntsman's Call right behind those two with on the inside Luxan and a little bit deeper out the Wild Westerner. Right behind those, Isla Diamonds is next from another Lord who's made a place and relegated Holt Whistle to be the backmarker of the eight runners. So back towards as they come for the first time, probably six or seven lengths separating the eight. And up front, Landacre Bridge lobs along nicely in front for Jamie Hamilton. About a half length clear of Lurgo and Charlie Todd racing in second. Huntsman's Call and Dal Jacob close up behind them. 
with Luke Stan tight on the inside fence for Alex Edwards. The Wild West now a little bit deeper. Isla Diamonds behind those, then another Lord and Holt Whistle, but pretty closely grouped now, only five or six lengths separating the runners. They've gone past us, are about to swing right-handed away from the enclosures towards the far side of the track. And no change up front, it continues to be Landacre Bridge making the best of his way along. Still in front by about a half length to Lurgo. Doggly, doggly. Second. These have been the front two throughout. Luke Stan content to sit in behind them with Huntsman's Call. So too the Wild Westerner, who continues to race three deep. Another Lord just making a little bit of ground on the outside of Isla Diamonds. And Holt Whistle still at the back of the eight runner. Field. 20 seconds. Right opposite the grandstands now, heading down the far side. And Holt Whistle just getting a little bit stretched at the back. He's now detached by four or five at the rear of the field. But up front, 10 seconds. Nine se okay. Eight Logo's seconds. On the outside. The Wild Westerner right behind them with Huntsman's Call and Luke Sand right down the inside fence. Zero the seconds. Towards the back of the field with Isla Diamonds and hard work for Holt Whistle, who's uh, detached by the best part of 15. I think he's pulling up at the back of the field, Holt Whistle, as they continue right down the far side then. And they've passed their point of departure, Landacre Bridge towards the inside of Lurgo. There wouldn't be much to choose between the two. The Wild Westerners inching a little bit closer as well. Huntsman's Call right behind those with Luke San. And then another Lord. And now reminders for Isla Diamonds at the back of the field. They swing the right-handed turn to come back towards the home straight. They're inside the final five and a half furlongs. And up front it's I'm out of here, man. Bridge who shows the way on the turn towards home. Landacre Bridge by a half length to Lurgo. Pace picking up all the while. Three deep of those, the Wild West, and they're coming smoothly into contention. Luke Sand behind those on the inside of Huntsman's Call, who's now ridden. Another Lord being asked to pick up at the back. They've leveled off the judge down the straight, back towards the final three furlongs. Landacre Bridge, Lurgo's just about upsides. The Wild West, and they're swinging away. Near side for Adam Wedge. Right behind those, Luke Sand's been asked to pick up. Down towards the final two and a half they come then. And up front, Lurgo now pounced on by the smooth traveling, the Wild Westerner. Luke San is next. Landacre Bridge has given way. Huntsman's call follows them. But the Wild Westerner's in front here. Back towards the final furlong and a half. The Wild Westerner opens up by two to three lengths in short time to Lurgo, who's giving chase in second. Then Luke San in third. But inside the final half they go. The Wild Westerner just nudged clear by Adam Wedge is going to score a decisive victory in the finale. The the Wild West has Market taken that really suspended. well. Suspended. So going second. Luke Sand for third. It's going to be tight for fourth. Maybe just Huntsman's call in front of Landacre Bridge. The Wild Westerner has won. In play. Race over two miles. Little Flower towards the outside, along with Katie's Fortune further in are the first two to show. They're being chased back in third spot by Whispering Pines with Bambino wide. Right down the inside, Fizzle Rock, also close to the pace. In the early stages is Grace's Solution. Further back to behind this group, Frontline Worker. Right down the inside, Lovey Bond with Masca de Morvan. Then down the inside is Mare in the Air being chased by Power of Power. And a few lengths to Gene Hill, who's last of all. End of the turn they go. And it is Katie's Fortune who leads them round, being followed by Little Flower and Whispering Pines. And just behind them goes Fizzle Rock. Grace's Solution is next. Bambino is wide. Frontline Worker is next. And then behind these, Masca de Morvan. Lovey Bond is towards the inner in the blue jacket. And further back behind the field is Power of Power. In front of Mare in the air. And last of all is Jean Hill. Racing now into the bend. That will bring them right-handed into the back straight. And out front, it's Katie's Fortune on the inside of Little Flower. Behind this leading pair, Grace's Solution is close down the inside, Fizzle Rock, Bambino. And Whispering Pines has been pulled up quite quickly and is out of the race, Whispering Pines. The favorites pulled up, so out front. The advantage is with Katie's Fortune. Over on the far side is Little Flower. Behind these in third is Fizzle Rock. And then towards the inside, Frontline Worker, Bambino is next. Down the inside next is Lovey Bond, a Grace Solution. Masca de Morvan is making ground. Power of Power is towards the backward mare in the air. And there's none behind Jean Hill. Continuing across the far side towards the mile pole. Little Flower up on the outside towards the inner is Katie's Fortune. Being chased in behind in third by Fizzle Rock. 
Bambino is next, and just behind this group, Tomasca de Morvan, and in the center is Frontline Worker. Then down the inside, Crazy Solution, just behind this one goes Lovey Bond. Oakley, Oakley. Power, Mare in the air, and a break to Jean Hill. So they go now towards the seven furlong pole. Little Flower and Katie's Fortune continue to show the way, being followed in third by Fizzle Rock. Right behind them, Bambino with Masca de Morvan, right up on the outside. Just ahead of this one, in fact, is Frontline Worker. Grace's Solutions in the center with Lovey Bond, and then Power of Power, who in turn is just in front of Mare in the air, and they're beginning to draw clear from Jean Hill. On the rising ground they go to make their way towards the top turn, and out front it's still Katie's Fortune, the inside Little Flower, the outer Fizzle Rock, just a close third behind them in the center. Behind these goes Bambino no! next. Towards the inside, Grace's Solution, and inside this one again is Lovey Bond. Masca de Morvan is wide, right in the pocket there in the center is frontline worker power of power is close running out of room there lovey bond a little and has been shuffled right back to the back of the main group top of the track they turn and it's katie's fortune little flower fizz and rock no change in the order since the flag dropped grace's solution is just on the inside with frontline worker who's picking up strongly bambino is wide power of power just in behind them with masca de morvan plenty with chances down the hill katie's fortune is now ridden little flower the sheepskin of fizz and rock and then frontline i'm out of here man right on terms with their pace and bambino on the outside Side, and it's frontline worker with on the outside Bambino. Little Flower still holds position, and towards the inside it's Fizzle Rock. The quartet hold the share of the lead, but now they quicken up, and Little Flower has picked up again with over on the near side frontline worker Bambino. Fizzle Rock staying at it over on the far side, and it's Little Flower with frontline worker coming right across onto the near side rail. Little Flower, Fizzle Rock, the far side frontline worker. They're near the spread, right across the track. The trio. It's Little Flower with Fizzle Rock on the far side, wandering. Frontline worker and Fizzle Rock gets up to beat little market Flower suspended. Third. Frontline worker who wandered and they were chased in by Mare in the air. Grace's solution, Masca de Marvan, Bambino, Power of Power, Katie's Fortune, Jean Hill, and Lovey Bond. Well, we had a finish reminiscent of that one earlier on in the afternoon where three of them went by very close together, and Fizzle Rock on this occasion has come out on top under Hugh McCohen. Market Nine, suspended. Seven. It was a race though that I think frontline worker probably should have run. She kit in play. Nick Doreen. Snappius is on the outside and running the rail is Slamador, who's followed by stable companion Duve Day. And then Marman at the back of the field on the third day. Racing right up to the top of the hill, it's Jarvis and Colin Keane in front by less than a length to Thunder Eclipse and Andy Slattery. Lying a handy second, and then Nick Doreen and Kevin Manning disputing third place with Slamador and Connor Hoban. Ogley, Ogley. Next, and then on the outside, heading down towards the straight, Snappius with the final couple, Marm, and on the third day. Reaching the halfway point no! of three as they turn into the straight, and Jarvis is joined by the striped jacket of Thunder Eclipse. And linked back to Slamador, pushed along in fourth as Nectarine, and then Duve Day and Snappius. I'm out of here, man. Down in the middle of the track, Marum and on the third day at the rear. Heading to the final furlong, little between Thunder Eclipse and Jarvis. A couple of links in front of Duve Day and Snappius is still running on ahead of Slamador and his Thunder Eclipse getting to the front in the final 150 yards. Snappius is still closing and Duve Day is trusting in between them. Snappius on the near side of Duve Day. Thunder Eclipse Market suspended. So, uh, maiden handicap and uh, early on jet set go the hot favorite right over to the far side in the red jacket two others going with her and they are aunt agatha and hail caesar although now from wider out the others beginning to cross over and gravitate towards that far side as well i'll be gone now showing up ahead perhaps overall in advance of roid moore right over to the far running rails loquacious boy the brown and orange colors and high security is at the back of the field as well. They head down towards halfway. Oakley, so Oakley. Now being ridden along to the far side with I'll be gone also pushed and shoved. More towards the near side is Royd Moore. And then the pink sleeves and cap of Art Adams trying hard to pick up. Loquacious boy against the fence, then Hail Caesar in high security. Inside the final furlong they come. Jet set go has now been headed. Aunt Agatha coming through. I'm out of here, man. Inside Royd Moore. Hail Caesar picking up from a fair way back in the yellow jacket this side. Aunt Agatha gets to the front though, going close home. Aunt Agatha.
Market suspended. And Agatha in the Guy Reed racing colours, Shane Gray and Kevin Ryan teaming up. Horse number six wins it then fast and late and wins it by about three parts of a length. Raidmore, first run since being gelded, finishes in second. Hail Caesar, big chance late on, fast finisher, finishes third. And four was Jet Set Go, who'd gone down to post early. So, and Agatha, just saying earlier on, on extra how it's always great to see Guy Reed, the late Guy Reed's colours uh, in... Um, they race Market, away a mile Market a in play. Market in play. others to get going as they begin their journey. And Far Hope and Mirage Mac going to lead the group on the extreme left to Star of Emirati. And also Tia Delina stays with those. But that quartet are by themselves as the white cap Divine Light uh, from the nose bandage. She do lead the main group. Create Belief and uh, Messidor behind these from Professional winner and Widow. Glasgow Girl is next. And behind these are Shari. And then Belief, the best turned out winner. Red, white and blue colors in the center of that group towards the right hand side Prado is at the back of that group but at this moment uh, it is uh, Far Hope in yellow leading Mirage Mac in the tartan jacket they're clear of the red sleeves of Star of Emirati on the extreme left meanwhile towards the right Divine Light with a wh white cap is leading up to Oakley, the Oakley. band of She Do Glesga Girl is behind those Montego Bay is their professional winner and create belief right in behind them as well the messy door uh, they're heading now down towards the closing stages just over two furlongs to go and she no! do with divine light towards the right create belief and then professional widow and messador in company with those samut in the blue and white cap more towards the center on the extreme left is far hope who's still backing on well i'm out of here man belief has stormed in a commanding lead down the grandstand side running rail samut in second place messador in company with these but there's one thing for certain they will not Catch, create belief. Look at this. She's Racing in play. Let's collect Pro M flat race over two miles, and the gossiper is the first to show with Miracle Millions right up on the outside. Esperti is next. Charming Molly's down the inner. Rightful Mind is between them. Further back to on the inside, Elegant Style with Esperti just behind these blue blood. Cafe del Mur is over on the near side. And last of all is Jack's Porter. Racing up to past the post, just over a circuit to complete the afternoon's action, and it is the gossiper, Mike O'Connor, who take them along for the Emmett Mullins yard, being followed by Miracle Millions. Derek O'Connor, line of three, dispute the third. Asperti, the near side of Rightful Mind, and Charming Molly, just on the inside, is next. And this group of five are chased in behind, and just clipping the rail there was elegant style cream sparkles just up on the outside of magic millions so racing now to make the way on towards the bend into the back straight and it's the gossiper who leads from miracle millions is on the inside of cream sparkles and just in the center is rightful mind charming molly and asperti are next and they're being followed in behind by elegant style further back behind these to blue blood who's next with cafe del mar and jack's porter is last of all racing now towards the bend and that's going to bring them right-handed into the back straight and it's the gossiper who shows the way to miracle millions who's racing in second spot into the turn on the outside cream sparkles rightful mind and charming molly with a spurty next behind this group goes elegant style who in turn is in front of blue blood and cafe del mar and jacks porter is last of all continuing across the far side of the track now with the gossiper bringing them along from miracle millions racing in second spot just in behind them in third is charming molly who's on the inside of cream sparkles and rightful mind is in between horses and then racing a little keenly behind them is a spurty then towards the inside elegant style with blue blood and cafe del mar wider out and last of all jacks porter continuing across now to go on past the mile pole and out front it's the gossiper with the advantage being Oakley, Oakley. miracle millions racing in second and third on the inside is rightful mind creep towards the outer is cream sparkles and just in behind this group is on the inside charming molly elegant style asperti blue blood cafe del mar and right behind them in a tightly bunched field as they disappeared was jack's porter 
but still in front it's the gossiper who takes them along being followed by miracle millions who second rightful mind and then cream sparkles and asperity with charming molly down the inner and elegant style in between just in behind this group is blue blood and jack sporters towards the back alongside Cafe del mar on the right oh! and now towards the top turn and it's out in front the gossiper from miracle millions who's just outside down the inner charming molly with cream sparkles and then rightful mind with asperity and a sheepskin wide ridden along elegant style then comes blue blood they've gone away from a reminder for Cafe del mar and jack sporter is last of all racing now into the bend that'll take them on down the hill the final time and this the met collect pro-am flat race and it's the gossiper who's going to lead them down miracle millions is now ridden as asperti comes strongly up on the outside and down the hill they come the gossiper asperti ridden along miracle millions i'm out of here man Sparkles getting into it now blue blood down the inside is rightful mind with elegant style but it's the gossiper who's trying to fend off asperti on the outside the pair just throw on a couple of lengths asperti's running around a lot now on the near side the Gossiper corner is better, but Asperti is still almost on terms. Blue Blood and Cream Sparkles are next, and it's the Gossiper from Asperti on the near side having a good old battle. The Gossiper keeping Asperti right over onto the near side rail. They're clear from Blue Blood, and it's the Gossiper from Asperti who has to switch again now as they race inside the closing stages. The Gossiper has the advantage for Emmett Mullins and Mike O'Connor as goes by in front. The Gossiper wins. And they're off. Market in Welcome play. The July course racing is underway for the Tesco Newmarket Every Little Helps Apprentice Handicap Stakes. And it's Ali Barber who broke well and will go on for Sam Field and the orange and white colours to lead up to Asdar who's going to sit in second position as they race for the first furlong. So Ali Barber in front by a length to Asdar. And then Vasco da Gama is racing up on the outside, the dark blue colours. All towards the inside, the blue and white of Always Fearless is next, the light blue of Mota Wafek is taking quite a grip in mid-pack, ahead of Papa Stauer, who's got the green sleeves and cap, alongside Hot Summer, who's in the red and white. That one now passed by the advancing Elegant Erin as they pass the five and head towards halfway. Asdar over on the far side, the cheek pieces now has a narrow lead to Ali Barber racing in second place. Behind them is Mota Wafek in third. Vasco da Gama's a bit wider in fourth place as the pace begins to increase. Oakley, Oakley. Always fearless in the blue and white ahead of the quarters of Papa Stour and then comes Elegant Erin as they race down now for the final two and a half furlongs. Still there is Asdar in front narrowly to Ali Barber shaken up down the outer. Between the Motta Wafek is moving quite well. Oh! Vasco da Gama is under maximum pressure for Harry Burns as they head down inside the two. Still there in the centre is Motta Wafek, Asdar far side. Ali Barber is hanging on in there as well, but it's Motta Wafek and Freddie Larson who now leads from the back. Hot summer. I'm out of here, man. Beginning to stay on, but inside the last they go. It's Motta Wafek in front to Ali Barber on the outside. Between them is Hot Summer. Motta Wafek trying to see this out. Still leads to Hot Summer in second. Motta Wafek wins for Freddie Larson. Second Hot Summer. Third. Ali Market Barber. suspended. Pace setter as dark. blue sleeves in company with Tritonic, a red jacket and white sleeves. Wide of those is Quick Thorn. Uh, two shades of blue hoops on the sleeves right up on the outside of Win O'Clock in behind those Arde in yellow. Uh, Kagan, the red jacket is behind this and then the pink jacket of Jeremiah. Uh, a lot of these taking quite a strong hold as they have the downhill run at this stage of the contest. The best turned out winner Alunak is about uh, two thirds of the way down. He's in company with Miran, a dark jacket and white sleeves. Sam Cook on the right giving Hector Crouch a very hard time. Horse is pulling very hard in Indeed, uh, Dark Pine in company with Raymond Tusk and Favourite Moon and Scarlet Dragon are the last group of runners as they turn now and heading down towards the final seven furlongs. And so it's Zabiel Champion who shows out in front here with Ben Curtis leading uh, to in second position Quick Thorn around the outside of Tritonic in the red and white jacket. Uh, Win O'Clock is just in behind those and then Sam Cook is deep on the course and Jeremiah's in company with this from Arde and they're followed by Kagan. Miran comes next and behind Miran is uh, the 
Spotted jacket of Raymond Tusk is off to the left. Oakley, Oakley. Just ahead of him. Dark Pine is back in the field. Also back in the field at this stage is Favorite Moon. And Holly Doyle has Scarlet Dragon as the back marker at this stage as they race right up around the outside of the course inside the final half mile. Zabil Champion with in second position Tritonic now. Uh, with those is Quick Thorn and then Win O'Clock and Sam Cook in the pink jacket of Jeremiah. Kagan behind these and then making progress is Raymond. Raymond Tusk, no! uh, then also trying to get through them now is Scarlet Dragon. He's gone from a, a last to halfway down the field and making very significant progress there on the left. Scarlet Dragon and Holly's brought him from last to first now, leveling up down the straight and it's Scarlet Dragon who's burst through now to join Zabil Champion in front. Tritonic behind these, then towards the right with a blue cap is Quick Thorn. Uh, behind these runners is Raymond Tusk. I'm out of here, man. On the left and favorite moon coming from the back of the field. Zabil Champion is trying to fend off all challengers. Quick Thorn nearest to us though with Oshin Murphy has taken it up and then Raymond Tusk with a red cap has moved through to take second position. Behind those in fourth place is Miran but it is... Agora que depois aqui de vermos as nossas corridas já as analisamos conseguimos perceber que fizemos um lucro muito à imagem dos dias anteriores foi ser, é, geralmente é sempre cerca de meia banca Tivemos aqui algumas, um errezito que mais um bocado de entusiasmo porque na zona final que eu por vezes quero forçar um bocado a entrada para ver se, porque acho que ele vai ganhar e acabei por pôr duas stakes muito juntas e aí depois o mercado quando vem contra mim já fico quase sem hipótese de fechar, logo vou acabar por perder a stake toda, acho que aqui o principal é dar um bocado mais dar aqui um bocado mais espaçamento dar aqui um bocado mais espaçamento entre as stakes principalmente na última parte, no último terço da corrida porque assim consigo fazer um preço médio mais alto e acabo por perder, posso perder menos porque depois se, ao, ao assumir o prejuízo consigo assumir um prejuízo menor por causa do preço médio ter subido na prática foi quase a única situação assim mais grave que encontrei que tenha ocorrido no dia, no dia de ontem, uh, no dia de ontem, no dia de hoje, uh, aproveitando, aproveitei houve também aqui, uma, aqui considerações a ter em conta, aproveitar as imagens laterais que por vezes aparecem da, da corrida, consegui, conseguimos muito ver, ver muito bem se o cavalo está, está com uma postura, uma postura boa, se está a travar o cavalo ou não, se o jockey está a travar o cavalo ou não, que é, 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 quase, é, quase uma, é quase fundamental, porque se o cavalo vier travado, na zona final o joca vai largar e, e ele vai dar um gás valente e a odd vai descer. É quase inevitável. É, é uma excelente oportunidade de se apanhar. Mais uma vez, aconteceu. Os dois cavalos na disputa, dois cavalos na disputa, foi aqui, até foi que uh, geralmente isto acontece em corridas assim muito curtas. Nesta situação aqui também aconteceu numa mais, mais longa. Os dois cavalos vieram na disputa e acabou por dar. Uh, dava para fazer uns trades lá, dava para fazer um back, por exemplo, a 3 ou, ou junto ao preço inicial e vir fechar e vir fechar cá mais abaixo. Ou, ou mesmo fechar mais curto e deixar uma free bet e ver se bate. Porque na prática aquilo é quase um 50-50. E se nós vamos, se entramos a 3, a nossa odd é muito mais, é uma odd favorável acima de 50%, não é? De 2. Logo acabamos por quase de certeza que vão ter um bom lucro, nem que seja abrir a 3 e vir fechar a 2, que ela quase certeza que vem bater a 2. Com menos risco, há sempre aquele lei para aí a 1,5, 1,30, 1,40, mas é preciso ter atenção. Não, ficar, não fazer isto muito na zona muito final, porque na zona muito final já pode estar, já está, pode já estar a vir um para a frente, um para ganhar, e já não há aquela, aquele sobe e desce dodges tão, tão grande. Bom, e foi assim, tipo, o último dia que vou em modo treino, foi mesmo para tentar perceber como é que as, as dodges movimentavam, como é que era alguns dos padrões, ver se consigo agora replicar isto em modo real e vamos ver como é que corre agora na próxima segunda-feira e por hoje é tudo 
até a segunda, fiquem bem.